Hi, welcome to iDrum. Uh, my name is Jungle Drummer. Um, everyone calls me Jungle. Um, for the next six lessons, I'm doing some introductory um, concepts with drum and bass drumming and showing you all the different unique ways of approaching drum and bass. Um, to start with, we're going to be looking at half time to double time and through um, other lessons covering things such as militant jungle, some rolling one bar breaks, some double snare drum playing, some playing on the rim, some rolling amens and some jungle amen patterns. Uh, I've been playing drum and bass for about um, God, uh, 14 to 15 years now and um, what I'd like to do is um, to show you all the unique ways of approaching it. It's beat orientated and um, with the first lesson we're going to be doing half time to double time. Um, when I first uh, started hearing hip hop um, I was just sort of blown away by the beats and how a beat could move a room and um, when I heard drum and bass to me it was the next logical step from hip hop. So um, I'm going to be showing you uh, how the two are related and how you can uh, basically master um, playing half time which will enable you to play double time. So uh, before we start, um, I'd just like to explain um, the setup I'm adopting and, um, and also things behind the tuning and uh, what equipment I'm using. Um, I've got a really simple setup with a lot of um, drum and bass records and dance music records. Um, everything just evolves from, from breaks and beats. So for the first few lessons, um, I'm keeping a really simple setup so we can just concentrate on groove, simplicity, but also uh, even just within this setup, we can still use our imagination to do imaginative things. Um, so with the tuning and stuff, um, I've got 20 inch kick, which is tuned um, pretty low and punchy. And uh, you can just hear that there. So it's quite sort of um, low and um, everything regarding pitch and dynamics within drum and bass um, is very important. So there's a deep sort of subby kick and then the main snare drum is um, sort of tuned in between tight and medium and the second snare drum is lower than the first one. So you can sort of hear the different pitches between the snare drums. Um, this symbol is a really great symbol for drum and bass. Um, with drum and bass, you don't sort of want many symbols that have really um, loud and prolonged sustain. So this has got some sustain, but it's also got some, some cut, which can sort of cut through at fast tempos and um, a really good bell. Um, so So you can hear the sort of different dynamics um, with the cymbal and just quickly in court notes. Just hear that, um, the different sort of dynamics on the ride, which we'll be looking at. And regarding the hi-hat, um, the hi-hat I have sort of quite tightly clasped, um, sort of it's tightly shut, because again, you don't want it to be. You don't really want um, your hi-hat to sound like this for drum and bass, because it's just, it's got too much sustain. So you want the hi-hat um, tightly clenched. So you can hear there that it just sits much better within the groove. Um, the only other thing to look at just before we start um, is the rim shot. Right, 
Right, with um, the concept of playing breaks and dance music, what you don't really want to do is overcomplicate um, the patterns. So like with hip hop, there's a principle behind it. And the principle is, I think when you're a drummer, is our jobs as drummers is really to make people move and to dance. So overcomplicating things is, um, you know, just doing too much um, is not really ever going to work when you're playing. Well, when I'm playing with DJs or in drum and bass acts or in different electronic acts, moving a crowd is always a priority with things. For lesson one, uh, what I'm going to teach you is basically how to play drum and bass within this lesson. And um, this is something that has always helped me with drum and bass drumming. And um, it's a relationship between half time and double time. Um, there's different uh, movements you can do and playing that can enable you to play fast. And um, basically, if you can play 16th notes one handed, so one E and a two E and a three and a four E and a. If you can play 16th notes, then I think anyone can play drum and bass. And the reason for this is, if you do one bar of 16th notes, um, obviously that's two eighths are 16. So if you do one bar of 16th notes, you can then go into two bars of eighth notes. So basically the same pattern I played there, I'll just demonstrate. So. So as you can see there, my hand, it doesn't actually change from 16th notes. So um, that's the key. If you can play two bars of eighth notes in the time you do one bar of 16th notes, then you can go from half time to double time. In um, some of the lessons we'll do later on, uh, we can also sort of look at the relationship between eighth notes at half time and eighth notes at double time. So. The 16th note into 8th note, you can always use that as a reference from going from half time to double time. But what I'm just about to show you will really help enable you to play at speed. Um, drum and bass, I mean, when I first started listening to drum and bass in the 90s, the tempo was about 165 to 167. So there's a lot more sort of swing in that. Um, the tempo then went up to 174 and now, you know, a lot of the nights, um, it can be at 182 to 184, which, which I actually think loses a bit of the swing. So, um, you know, if, you, if, if I am playing at a drum and bass night though, the speed obviously, and the endurance and stamina you need to play drum and bass is really important. So what I'll do, I'm just gonna show you something very simple it's um, the first example um, on the PDF. And basically, this is just an eighth note, and one, two, three, four is accented. So one and two and three and four and. So if you practice this,
at different speeds, it should enable you to develop a motion and that motion will help you play faster. So just one more time. Right, now we're gonna look at our first pattern, which is exercise number two on the PDF. So with this one, um, the bass drum is on one and the and a three um, in 16th notes and it is the same in 8th notes. So as I've discussed, we're going to go from 16th to 8th notes, half time to double time. So. Now what I did there was I fluctuated some of the timing. So um, with the tempo, um, be adaptable for what you're comfortable at. So basically all we're looking at at the moment is to go from half time to double time. So um, I just gave you the example there of you know, playing it fast and playing it slow. But the motion um, is very important with the sixteenths and the high sixteenths on the hi hat, um, because then it leads into the eighth notes. So basically, um, as long as you do the motion, it should enable you to play fast. So now what we're going to do is um, we're going to do exercise number three, um, and this time I've added a ghost stroke on the E of three. So um, I'll just play this pattern slowly to start with um, and obviously it's the same um, it's the e of three in sixteenths and the e of three in the eighth notes so So even though that's a simple beat, when you're actually playing it um, with the right dynamics, it still sort of has got a swing to it. Um, I'll just play the eighth notes again, because I just sort of uh, noticed then, you know, it's, it, it's important uh, to sort of inject a bit of feeling and swing into the beats. So. So with that pattern there, you just saw me applying it to different sound sources. So although we're at a beginning point, um, once you're comfortable with some of these patterns, it would be great if you could apply it and just use your imagination to get different sounds and pitches, which is really important for drum and bass playing. Um, so now we're going to look at exercise number four. And what I've done here is I've added a ghost stroke on the at of two. So basically it's um, two E and a. Uh.
Right, exercise five. Um, one of the favorite aspects for me about jungle drumming and, and drum and bass, um, and there's also very, you know, it comes from hip hop, is amens. And amen um, is when you've got a double on the kick. So at hip hop tempo, We'll be looking more in depth at amens and um, sort of old school jungle drumming um, in later lessons. But for today, I really wanted to do um, just a sort of basic example of an amen. So I'll play through the pattern and again, I'll do it slowly to fast. Okay, that was the final example of today's um, half time to double time, hip hop to drum and bass, um, Blagger's Guide to Drum and Bass Drumming. Um, I hope you enjoyed the lesson and in lesson number two, we're going to be looking at some militant jungle. So I look forward to seeing you then. Hi and welcome to issue 11 of iDrum magazine. Inside you're going to find a fantastic interview with Mr Mike Johnston, the man that's currently teaching the world to play drums. We also get with Shannon Larkin from Godsmack, Stefan Mass, great percussionist from Germany and from the Crescent City, Mr Joey Peebles. In our review section you'll find reviews of the new DW Black Nickel Over Brass Snare Drum, the Mapex Meridian Maple Jazz Kit, we also take a look at some fabulous minor percussion. We also investigate the Peisty 20 series master collection of ride cymbals. Sam gets his hands on a Pearl Vision kit. And I get to plug in a Yamaha DTX 700. We've also got our full tuition section with guys like the Jungle Drummer, Jamie Borden, Matt Murphy, Ed Williams, Tom Chapman, Pat Garvey and Pete Lockett all on hand to make you better, smarter players. We have our usual CD and DVD roundup, plus of course all the latest news. And as a bonus, your chance to win a Sonor Jojo Meyer Perfect Balance pedal. Just check out the competition on the pages inside and it's free to enter. That's it, enjoy the issue and we'll see you again soon.